Hello, hello, you beautiful souls. Let's jump right into this week's episode. We are going to be talking about toxic friendships, friendship breakups, and all of the intermingling parts of it all. And I get a lot of questions about friendship breakups, toxic friendships. So I figured who else to bring in as some insight than my best friend, because we have both dealt with toxic friendships, friendship breakups, in such similar but different ways. And we both have such different perspectives on it. And we have such a good friendship from having shitty friendships that it brings a different perspective and a good perspective, I think, coming from two people who <laughs> have li like worked so hard to have such a healthy friendship that being able to have that insight. So let's jump right in. One of the biggest questions that I get is what is toxic red flag signs for you in a toxic friendship or like when a friend is being toxic. So what are things that happen that you're like, okay, no, fuck this, I'm out. So if they're two different people, so if they're, when it's just the person and I, they're super nice and they're not, not coming after me or anything and the such like yeah. not putting me down yeah in any way and then we're out and especially this happens a lot around boys i feel like and they will pick out anything that i'm insecure about that they know about or they'll bring any embarrassing situation that i've ever been through that they've seen mm -hmm. they'll like bring it up and that, i've learned that that's like a huge red flag yeah. anyone that's your real friend always wants to put you up and oh, never, yeah. like put you down no absolutely and like girls especially I feel like get so insecure around their friends which doesn't make a lot of sense because like you just said your friends are there to boost you up lift you be your people yeah. so it's very interesting when you're out in public and you have your people trying to be like oh, let me kind of like gaslight and manipulate the situation to bring you down because I want to make myself look better. And two boys talk a lot. So let's say like you walk away and then mm -hmm. they out of nowhere have something bad to say. You're going to hear it back. Oh, because yeah. Because guys, they're the biggest gossipers ever. No, so they you're really gonna are. Hear it. So that's like the worst feeling too. Yeah. And like growing up, you learn to like stay away from if that happens to you. Mm -hmm. Go the other way. <laughs> also too, I think that's where like backhanded compliments come in. Yeah a lot that a red flag for me is whenever a friend I feel like this happened a lot in like high school and middle school not so much like now or like in my early 20s but backhanded compliments because they saw something in you that they wish that they had in themselves so they're like oh like let me give you a backhanded compliment because I like see something in you that I'm envious of yeah yeah no I, I feel like especially like I've always been like so skinny mm -hmm. and I feel like a lot of that would like I would get like attacked for being skinny mm -hmm. it's like, how is that my fault that mm -hmm. is not my fault yeah no and then too I feel like a sign for me is when they're talking like they talk badly about other people to you and they try to use that as like a bonding tool because a lot of people like you bond over hatred right that's a big one I learned as an adult yeah that like if you are like shit talking the same people together then people are like oh like but we're so bonded blah blah if they're shit talking to you they're shit talking about you yeah especially if they're quote unquote friends with the mm -hmm. other people and they're talking like shit about them mm -hmm. then you better watch out because they're going to talk shit about you too oh absolutely and like you got to be careful what you say to those people too because what you say to them to right in back. confidence yep is going to be manipulated spun out and it get back to you in the worst way possible. And then you're not really gonna be able to defend yourself either. Cause you kind of did talk shit too, but you just don't know how to. Yeah, you don't know the like connotation yeah. that it was put into. So mm -hmm. you're like, okay, fuck, I might have said something along those lines, but, but they now- didn't mean it that yeah, way. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Where like that goes into like, me and you talk about this all the time that there's a huge difference between venting and talking shit. Yeah. That like, if I'm venting about a certain situation, how someone made me feel, that's completely really different than me being like, so-and-so is a bitch, she's yeah, fake as fuck, all this stuff. Like, character. That's exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And like, toxic friends manipulate that so much. And like, I don't want to say that it's like when, I don't want to say really insecure people make bad friends, but like, mm. in a way. Yeah. I feel like you can get wrapped up in a bad friendship without being insecure you just don't mm -hmm. realize like you're just trying 
or maybe you're trying to save that person. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get them out of that, and honestly, you get wrapped up in mm -hmm. it, too. I feel like that could be it, too. Another red flag for me is girls that prioritize boys over girls. Oh, yeah. No. Mm-mm. It's either you're a girl's girl or you're not my girl. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that's, like, the hardest thing because... Especially when you're younger, everyone's boy crazy, yeah. and it's so hard to get out of it. But if you are willing to like throw your girls under the bus for dick, no, mm -mm. I don't trust you. I don't either. From a hole in the wall, I won't tell you anything about my life. I'm not trying to be buddy buddy with you. I'll be nice to you, but like, but you can spot those girls from like a mile away too. Yeah, I agree. And too, like, that's not fair. That's not fair to you. Mm -mm, not because at all. if you're friends with the girl and. Let's say you guys have been friends for years, and then out of nowhere she gets a boyfriend and she wants nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. That's hurtful. Oh, absolutely. That hurts so much. And so I don't, like, you, you should learn to, like, stay away from people that you can tell they're going to do that to mm -hmm. you from the beginning. Obviously, you never know. You never know, yeah. But if you can tell, like mm -hmm. you said, you can tell, yeah. stay away. You need to be able to find that balance too, like when you are in a relationship, that's the healthy mold of girl time, friend time, family time, and significant other time. Because if you completely wrap yourself in to your relationship and use that as an identity, you're going to lose yourself in that relationship. And then when you come out of it, you're not going to know who you are and you're not going to have anyone in your corner because you completely created who you are around your significant other. And that can be difficult. Yeah. And like... We're all humans, and, like, we yeah. all have, like, feelings. So, like, everyone, every feeling you hurt, they're not going to want to be back in your life. Or they will sometimes, but not in the same matter, not the mm -hmm. way that you'll need them to be, especially yeah. right after a breakup. Oh, yeah. Because you'll be so lost, so alone. For sure, for like sure. If you literally became the person that you're dating. Oh, yeah. Also, too, like I feel spiral. like when you and I have both experienced this, um... <laughs> when you either like someone or have a history with someone and your friend goes after them oh yeah that's just the biggest red flag within mm -hmm. itself that just gives me pick me girl that just gives me she wanted to like not be me necessarily but like yeah. wanted like the things that i had and it's like how are you gonna sit next to your friend and be like your, your relationship is so good, like, all this stuff, hype me up, and then go after my man? <laughs> oh, no. Absolutely not. No, that is, like, the biggest red flag, and what's so funny is that girls will always talk about it to other girls, and it gets back to you. It does. And you're like, babe, did you not think that... <sighs> Or it was going to get back to or the me? worst is when the guy comes up to you and was like, oh, your friend, your friend just hit me up. <laughs> and you're like, oh. <laughs> and you get like secondhand embarrassment yeah. because you're like, oh, fuck. Because it's, and two, I feel like it's the people that like you never see coming. Yeah. And then you Which have the like, worst. the absolute worst. And you have like this random person coming up to you and you're like, oh, hey, like your girl's in my DMs. And you're or like, like, really? And you're like, oh. Didn't know. <laughs> and then if you confront them about it, they like try to gaslight you yeah. and they're like well it's not that serious like i wasn't, oh. e I wasn't even talking to him like that he's being crazy and it's like really because i read it and mm, i don't know you should be talking to them at P all point blank period if, if him and i are over you two are over <laughs> yes <laughs> no oh, absolutely if you are my girl and you remain friends with my ex after we break up you can keep him yeah. i'm out that's okay i'm tapping out i'm done this this is it yeah. I broke up with you and him at the same yep. time. Because that's what, that's what it's looking like. Yeah. Yep. I'm not doing this. No. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, just those... I don't even know what that is. Or, like, I don't know how to explain that as a red flag. But it's, like... I don't... I feel like it just makes sense well, in it just the makes way. You, it, it is a red flag because it's, like, you're disposable to them. Oh, yeah. Because, like, they're aware of that. Mm -hmm. They know They know your personality. They know how you are. Mm -hmm. And, like, I get it. Some people are, like, don't think like that. And, like, everyone has different opinions. But, like, mm -hmm. if you're my friend, you know that's my opinion. So if you're willing mm -hmm. to do that, you're willing to lose me. Mm -hmm. So. This next thing I feel like is a red flag for, I mean, I feel like everything that we're saying could be a red flag for, like, a regular relationship, too. Yeah, of course. Um, but using your bad childhood experiences <laughs> as an excuse to be a shit person. Yeah, no. That's. We all have a sad story. We've all been through something. You can't use it as an excuse for poor behavior. That's a hard one, though, because 
you look at the person and like you understand. You relate. Yeah, you have something. And you're like, okay, like maybe they're just doing this because, you know, this and this happened to mm -hmm. them in the past. But it's like, a lot of a lot has happened to me. A lot has happened to you. A lot has happened to God knows mm -hmm. whomever. Yeah. I'm not being a shitty person, you're not being a shitty person, that other person is being shitty, why are you? Mm -hmm. And it's like, let's say it happens once, like we talk about it, okay, let's get help, let's mm -hmm. like figure it out, and some people don't want that, that's fine, but I'm not going to put myself in a position, again, because I have, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. to stick around and get hurt, Yeah. because it will literally tear you apart. Oh yeah. Because, you know, I, I can't do that, people being, I, hate, I don't like mean people you'll be mean I can't do it yeah that's where I draw the line mm -hmm. no and using that like if I if we have a situation I confront you about something that made me uncomfortable or I didn't agree with and you then turn it back on being like well because of such and such that happened in my life this is why I'm that way okay well let's figure out a way to work through this yeah. let me help you like how can I assist and like if it continues happening and you're not willing to work on yourself and you want to victimize yourself over and over again and use that as a cop-out then that's not fair yeah like, we all have to grow up at some mm -hmm. point. Not saying you're not allowed to be upset about no, what not at all. Not at all. you or anything like that. Yeah. But at some take point, your time to heal. Take your time to grieve. But, like... You have to take accountability at oh, some yeah. point. Because, like... We all grow up. We all become adults. Mm -hmm. Life isn't easy for anyone. No, life isn't easy for anyone. And it's so easy for a lot of people to victimize themselves and be like poor me I'm the only one that struggles and use that as an excuse to be a shit person yeah. but it's not an excuse because every single person has been through something terrible and if we all allowed it to make us bad people the world would be filled with terrible humans it's like I was telling you earlier I came in here and I'm like I'm sick of feeling mm -hmm. sorry for myself yeah like I'm done doing that not that I was being shitty to anyone but yeah. it's just like I'm Something. You get tired. Of yeah, it. you were tired of your, having a pity party. Yeah. You were sad. You allowed yourself to be sad. And now you're like, wait, fuck this. I'm tired yeah. of being sad. <laughs> Can I just be happy? And like we, but like we all have that point. Like, yeah. I feel like especially when you struggle with mental health, which we both do, it's a wave of like you have yeah. your ups, you have your downs, and like all that stuff. And you need to remember that too, and give yourself grace in the situation, yeah. because you're gonna have moments where you feel like you're on top of the fucking world. Yeah. And you're going to have moments where everything's crumbling underneath you. But none of it is an excuse to be a shit person. It is not. <laughs> it really is not. You can be sad and a decent human, okay? No, you really can be. And also, I feel like the people that have allowed what they've been through to help them grow are the greatest people you'll ever meet in your life. Yeah. And they're the ones who help you the most, too. Mm -hmm. Like, they're going to be in your corner. They're going to be your ride or die. Mm -hmm. And, like, because they know what it's like to they suffer. They get it, but they also, like, go not. Mm -hmm. exactly and I think that can go into I think something that's so important in friendship in general that if your your friend has to be there for you through the good and the bad and like a lot of toxic yeah. friendships are they're only there for the good like the party friends like we've all had party yeah. friends they're not going to be in your corner when you're bawling your eyes out at two in the morning yeah. like and I think too like this will it's hard to be friends with someone who's going through it so much Mm -hmm. It is because you, you have to, and then there's a fine line too about like that person. Are they being so toxic to you? Mm -hmm. All that stuff. But we we've like been there, and it's it's hard to to look at your friend and see them suffer so much when you can see the way out. Yeah. Like you mm -hmm. see, like just like you can just do this and everything will be fixed. But they don't see that, and you have to understand that. And I think it's really shitty when someone's just like well if you're not gonna do what I'm telling you to do then I'm gonna walk away yeah I don't that's, think not, fair. that's not nice either no that's not fair because you need to be able to understand yeah. and see understand. it from someone else's perspective yeah, yeah. because like I'm a very like tough love person you know that about yeah. me but like I like when I'm dealing with sensitive people I'm not that way yeah because I know that like if you need me I'm gonna be there for you and you need to take your time with whatever yeah. because you can be tough love and be compassionate at the same time and a lot of people struggle with that duality of being like okay my way or the highway if you're just gonna sit here and throw yourself a pity party and like sit and sulk and whatever blah blah okay then I'm not fucking doing it yeah. that's not friend yeah that's not that's not how things work either like no. everyone sees things like it's literally like a car like there's the passenger mm -hmm. and then the well, the driver and then the passenger <laughs> you guys are looking at the same road but you're seeing two completely mm -hmm. different things oh yes and that's literally how it is mm -hmm. so sometimes the other person is like she's like I see the light mm -hmm. but the 
person isn't there yet. So yeah. you have to have patience. And mm -hmm. I feel like when your friend is like really going through something hard, the worst thing you can do is just say, F you. Yeah. And leave. And be like, I'm not dealing with your issue. That's yeah. selfish. No, that's so selfish. And especially when you want them to be there for you yeah. and you're not willing to be there for them. Yeah, because like we said, everyone goes through it. Mm -hmm. So things will like reverse and then yeah. you'll be the one going through it and you, you'll need help. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, how do you best deal with like toxic friends? Like what has worked for you when being able to like pinpoint a toxic friend? How do you deal with the friendship? So I used to be very bad at it. Yes, you were. I, I used to get walked all over. I did not, I thought that I could save the person. I, I've always been a person where I've only had like one or two friends because when I'm your friend, I'm your friend. Yeah. Like I can't even have too many friends because I don't know how to juggle all of that. Whenever I see people with like 15, 20 friends, I'm like, yeah. first of all, I don't even know that many people. I don't get yeah, along same. with that many people. I don't even like that many <laughs> don't I don't like that many people I don't know that many people I don't know how you met this many people yeah, it literally like where like and how do you keep up with each other's lives yeah so much I feel like that's our thing though because like we have to like keep up like we know like what's going on the we ins and outs of each other okay and all that yeah. stuff but yeah I don't so I was very bad at it because you know I don't know I just didn't I didn't see it and I thought I could like help the person or yeah. like, almost fix the person. Well, you always saw the, like, you see the good in people. Yeah, and it was that story of when it was just the person and mm -hmm. I, it was wonderful. Yeah. Like, we were the bestest of friends or there was nothing like yeah. bad about it. It's so nice to me, all this stuff. You go out in public and it's just like completely different or I would get screamed at for no reason. I couldn't sit next to people and not get yelled at. You were in like a bad relationship yeah, really, like your really toxic was. friendship was like like a bad a bad relationship re like boyfriend yeah like the worst that you can think of yeah yeah like that's literally like what your toxic yeah. friendship was it was a bad boyfriend and i didn't see it until until you said something <laughs> oh then, yeah then we met and you were like well I, I started seeing like them treating their other friends shitty mm-hmm and I wouldn't like that because I would never do that to yeah. someone. I'd be like, oh, that's so shitty because they're doing that to that person. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they're doing that to me, if not worse, because I was their best friend. Yeah, you had, like, rose-colored glasses on the entire time. Yeah, and then, then you started coming around and you were like, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Yeah, you are like, they're just not nice to you. And I was like, huh, they're not, <laughs> huh. <laughs> and then I, like, start, and, like, it wasn't like, oh, like, they're mean I'm just gonna cut them off I tried to talk and I tried to explain mm -hmm. myself and I tried to be there for them still because I knew everything the person has yeah. gone through and it was easy but yeah also too my brother was like dude like, what are you doing yeah your brother really saw it yeah and was, was like just like taking your soul away yeah I was like yeah so I had to cut that one off but I feel like there's a fine line I don't yeah. think you should cut off every relationship mm -mm. you have. It, it really depends. There's some relationships, there's no saving. Yeah, and I think that being able to know the difference between the yeah. ones that are worth saving and the ones that aren't yeah. is so a you big grow, thing. You grow up and you, you see and you grow out of things, which mm -hmm. that's fine too. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, some relationships you have to just cut off for yeah. your own good. Yeah, but I think being able to have the conversation, like you said, like don't just, like if you're in a toxic friendship, don't just like cut it off null and void and be like, okay, fuck you. Like I'm done. Like try to have that conversation and see if it's like fixable, repairable. If it is, or if it's like a really, really mm -hmm. bad one, then like, okay, like I also, distance yourself. I also think you should still walk out of it at peace with yourself. Oh yes. I, yeah, I agree with you completely. Like at least you tried, you mm -hmm. said what you had to say and mm -hmm. I don't go like that almost just spoke Portuguese <laughs> like that friendship of mine I don't hate the person no I if I see the person I'd still like, hey like I'm still like cordial, cordial. Like, I'm yeah. not I just don't want the person in my life because I know I can't handle it yeah because there's too much mm -hmm. that already has happened that I can't like not necessarily let go of because I have because I'm so young mm -hmm. but just like I'm scared and I never want that in my life again. That's yeah, pretty you, much what it is. Yeah, you learned a very valuable lesson of what you don't want. Yeah. And being able to walk away from that friendship in something that I think a lot of people struggle with is knowing that 
you can walk away from someone and still have love for that person. I have yes. love for every single person yeah. that has ever been in my life and has made an impact in my life. You may not be in my life anymore physically. I wish the best for you. I want nothing but happiness for you. I want you to heal. I want you to find all of the amazing yeah, things in the world. That's something I admire in you because you're very much like that. You don't mm -hmm. look at anyone and you're like, oh, I hope they like fail at this or blah, blah, Like, the person could have done her so dirty. <laughs> and when I say dirty, I mean so dirty. And this girl's like, I wish him the best. <laughs> and like, she doesn't mean it like, oh, I wish him the best. No, she genuinely means I wish them the best. And I'm like, hmm, I'm not that strong. <laughs> I, I wish everyone well, but I'm not that strong. <laughs> uh, thanks, Nat. Yeah. No, but, like, I mean, I worked, like, really hard to be that way because, like, I used to be, like, so angry with people that did me dirty. And I got to the point in my life where, like, that anger was breaking me. Yeah, it's almost yeah, like, more harmful to you than to the other person. Exactly. And, like, we all have heard the quote that it's, like, holding on to anger is, like, drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Literally, it is. And, like, you didn't know me when like I was like really bad but like I was like I was so mean and like but I was so mean to others because I was so filled with anger yeah. that once I got to the point of forgiving others I was like that's when I met you yeah that is when you met me yeah, yeah. I met you right when you started to let yep. go of everything yeah and like I think that you will get to that point though at some point yeah I mean because like you're very because like you're very you look at people and you're like I want what's best for you. I may not want you around. No, yeah, I may I do. do. I may dislike you. Yeah, but I feel like I have a little more anger than like I don't have that like peace where I'm just like, oh, you know, it's fine now. I'm like yeah. I'm still angry. At yeah, you, but, like I yeah. just don't want anything bad to yeah. happen to you. That's how I am. I'm like, oh, yeah. anger's still there. <laughs> yeah. Gotta work on that. Everything heals with time. That's the way I look at it. That. Like, I feel like everything's such a cliche, but all the cliches are true, yeah, that, like, yeah. time heals all things. But it, re true. it really does, like, if you're not healed from something, you haven't given it enough time. Yeah. And that's not to say, like, you just sit in there and you're like, okay, I'm waiting for this healing to happen. Yeah, like, like, when is it going to happen? You have to do the work. Because I feel like so many people are like, okay, but, like, I'm sitting here and I'm waiting. And it's just, yeah. but it's not happening. I'm like, but are you doing the work? Yeah, it's like, are you, like, listening to what your feelings mm -hmm. are telling you? Are you, like, really... You know, getting to the bottom of what actually hurt you. Sometimes yeah. people don't even know what's hurting them. Yeah, like the root cause of anything, like being able to pinpoint exactly what's hurting you and heal that in whatever modality is best for you, key. Yeah, do it. Doesn't matter what it is. Key, whether it's like going to talk therapy, EMDR, somatic healing going and I've literally walked into fields before by myself and like screamed off the top of my fucking lungs <laughs> and leave it. <laughs> See like, it. that's that <laughs> and that's a wrap and we're good <laughs> and I don't know and then this is we <laughs> I feel like you've dealt with this more than I have of how to deal with the aftermath of toxic friends because some toxic friendships don't just you Stay end here. and go away um I think this is where your patience really gets tested you know like because you don't want like because like I was saying before like you don't want to leave that friendship being like mean or like yeah. getting into a fight mm -hmm. overall and that's where it gets tricky because sometimes people don't understand unless you get into an argument with them or unless you're having a blowout fight mm -hmm. or there's a specific pinpoint reason as to why mm -hmm. you're not their friend anymore. They haven't done something to you in a week. Why, why can't you be my friend? Mm -hmm. They don't let go and they'll keep coming back. And that is for a friendship, relationship, whatever you want to apply this to. It is mm -hmm. the hardest part of it all, I feel. Yes. Because you love that person and they're in your face all the time. They're texting you. They're calling you. They're showing up to wherever mm -hmm. you are, and they're trying to get back into your life. And if you put your foot down and you say no, you, that doesn't, I don't know how to say this. Like, it's, it's hurting the person, yeah, but it's really hurting you seeing that person beg mm -hmm. for your attention, for your, yeah. Because you love them. Yeah, and, like, you want to give You're it to seeing them. You're seeing them hurt. Yeah. But, like, you're also hurting at the same time, and it's easy for them to not see yeah. both sides. That it's not just them in pain because... It's frustrating. It's perceived as it's... If you're the one cutting it off, that it's easy for you. Yeah, and, like, you're the bad guy. Mm-hmm. 
because there's no like specific reason or like the people like from the outside don't see so they have other people to talk to and yeah. obviously they're gonna go talk to them and they're like no they're just being like a bitch or she's just being mean like she has no idea what but like, you weren't in their relationship there's a whole other backstory that you're not yeah, seeing you're yeah not, you didn't go through the things that i went through mm -hmm. there's a reason why i'm doing this there's three sides to every story his hers the truth yes <laughs> every time <laughs> Like, because what you believe to be the complete truth and what they believe to the complete truth and what actually happened is all different things because everything's perceived differently. Yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like some people will never go away unless you move. <laughs> <laughs> so you just have to learn to... Hauling my ass out of the city, it's fine. Yeah. It's just... It is what it is. <laughs> some people are nuts and that's what you're going to get. Yeah. But... Stand firm in your boundaries. Yeah. And but, like, like, be nice about it. Yeah, that's to a I point. Mean. Yeah, to if, a point. I mean, if they're, like, literally, like, stalking me, <laughs> please don't be so nice. I laugh because, like, we've literally been there. <laughs> like, I've literally been stalked by people. And I'm like, it's just, it's it's not going to happen. And like, <laughs> sleeping outside my door is not going to prevent me from anything. I have no. a back door. No, literally, like, stalking me. Not going to help. Not going to help. You're it's actually, actually, <laughs> actually making the case scary. worse. Like, I'm more terrified of you now than I was before. No, yes, absolutely. And, like, handling it with care. And also, like, not, because I feel like it's... Be safe, too. Yeah, be safe. And... People get weird because I have no idea. And also, like, be ready for the repercussions of it with them shit-talking you, them turning people against yeah. you. Yeah, so I'd say losing more, more friends. Like, friends than you would expect to, like... Mm -hmm. People pick sides and they oh, yeah, absolutely. do, so you just have to, like... Prepare yourself for that. Yeah. Because when I feel like when you lose one friend, it's a domino effect, it especially is. if you're in a friend group. Yeah, it just all goes downhill. They, everything goes downhill. Like, I feel like when we met, like, I mean, no bad blood towards any of the people that we yeah. were friends with at the time. Like, we kind of just all faded. Um, but it's, like, we're the only one standing. I know. I don't even know what happened. I don't know what happened to... Anyone. anyone i don't know what's going on in their lives no like nothing. no no bad blood no yeah. nothing just like but then again like it wasn't like you experienced it more with when you ended your side of the friendship of like the repercussions of the shit talking and like oh, yeah. oh well this is what so and so said or so and so wants to be back in your life and like going through the grapevine of people trying to get yeah. to you and too like people are trying to bring us together mm -hmm. like, put us in the same room yeah like literally i no, yeah, like other people getting involved is mm -hmm. the worst. I feel like oh yeah, it sucks. Yeah, no. Or absolutely. people like talking in your ear, then mm -hmm. you think you're wrong and you don't know mm -hmm. what to think anymore. But it's like you literally were not there. You yeah. don't know. You're not me. No. Yeah, and you need to prepare yourself for people or, not having that conversation with you. You know what I hate too? After everything, it's been a while that things done with. Someone will come and start talking shit about that person mm. to you. Mm -hmm. Oh no save yourself mm -hmm. trust me i know who that person is yep. i don't need you talking shit about yep. anyone to me yeah and also it's like just because we're not friends anymore doesn't mean that i'm gonna sit here and shit talk yeah like, shit i talk respect them, to you. them. they're yep. in my life for years yep. and, and it's I like don't want to hear it they might run their mouth about me but it says more about them than it does yeah, about like, me so i'm gonna you can run your mouth i'm gonna sit back and say nothing yeah, like i'm not i'm not doing this yeah like I, when i say i wanted to be done, done i meant it yeah if i don't if i'm like i don't want you in my life anymore that's everything. Yeah. I don't want you in my life. I don't want to talk about you. I don't want to have interactions yeah. about you. Nothing. Because also, like, if that gets back to them, they're like, oh, well, I heard you were talking about it. I wasn't. And they just come right back into your life. Yep. No, I wasn't. Thank you. And, like, especially with girls, it's that domino effect of, like, um, do you remember when I was, like, leaving the venue? Mm-hmm. And I had that, like, domino effect of, like, those friendships, like, falling. And I literally lost, like, three of my best friends within three months I of each other. I it. Yeah. Because it was that domino effect of, okay, well, I'm not friends with this person anymore. And then they go and they run their mouth and all this stuff. And then it was, like, I literally dealt with that for, what, like, a year and a half? And you had two nothing years, to do with anything? Nothing to do with anything. And I was just, like, okay. Yeah. yeah. I remember you got to a point where you are like, I don't even know what to say anymore. <laughs> and I would, like, try to have the conversation of, like, when... I stopped being friends with one person and then the other people started to fall off. I tried to reach out and have those conversations yeah. that I was like, okay, like, is everything okay? Like what's wrong? And like them not being able to healthy, have a healthy communication that like if someone just picks another person's side and doesn't ask you anything about it, good riddance. Yeah. 
Or but it's you, hard to see that at it, the time, and it's it hard is. not to fight for it and be like, what the fuck? Because, like, I was so sad when that happened. Yeah. Like, like, I was, like, heartbroken. Just, because when you're going through a friend breakup, it, it hurts so bad. I feel like it, it almost hurts more. Yes, than because a regular you don't breakup. Expect it. Because you never a, see it coming. A, a regular relationship, there's always that possibility. Mm-hmm. But, like, a friendship, you just don't think about it. No. You don't think about it, you don't. That, that's just not a thought in your mind. No. And you, you think don't. you're going to be friends forever. It's like you're <laughs> so sad, especially when you're young. Oh, you have like the matching like friendship necklace. Yeah, and everything. Like, it's so sad. <laughs> so sad. How? What is the best way that you think of healing, or like dealing with a friendship breakup? Because it is that thing that you never see coming. Yeah. Like. I don't know if I've nailed it yet. Oh, I haven't. I haven't even nailed healing from a real breakup yet. Uh, I don't think I don't think anyone ever will. Like I don't think I don't I don't have that down. But there's no playbook for this. I guess the best way that I dealt with it was making sure my next friendships were solid and good and what I deserved and wanted. And I make sure to like try to be the best friend that I can be Mm -hmm. too. Like I never want to be like a shitty friend. Yeah. It's my worst nightmare. (laughs) If we're being quite honest. (laughs) Because I know how it feels. Yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like that's how, I guess, you cope with it. Yeah. To, like, yeah. find yourself, like, good friends. And you can. There's a there, lot there of are good people, people out there. there. People who are, well, like, understand you and, like, relate to you. Mm-hmm. And so, I feel like that's the way I, like, handle it. I feel like as I've gotten older, too, I've realized, like, the quality of people in my life over the quantity of people in my life. Oh, my and when you're younger, you think having so married. many friends and popular and all that stuff, when you're older, you realize how important it is to have, like, if you have, like, two solid people in your life, you're winning. You're winning, like, that you can count on yeah. because when you see those big friend groups, you know, like, it, it's hard. It's hard. And... Also, too, I think when you're dealing with it, a lot of people try to get closure from the friendship breakup, and I think that it is possible, but you all, because, like, being able to reach out and be like, okay, like, why did such and such a thing happen? Like, why aren't we talking anymore? But I think it really depends on the person, too, that you're dealing with, because a lot of people will just, like, ghost you or be super cold towards you and, like, won't sit down and have that closure with you. Yeah. Which is hard because in a friend, like in regular breakups and in friendship breakups, like you don't see them coming. So you're like, what the fuck? How, like if it's a good friend, like. Yeah, you're like, what did I do? What did like, I you do? You almost want to know. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'll speak from my, per- from my situation. After like two years, I think, I sat down with the person I talked to them and yeah. I told them. Yeah. I like, I just told them everything. I'm yeah. like, this is why like our friendship couldn't work and yeah. like, everything that was done. And I asked them to like tell me like yeah. the things that I did to um, no one's perfect you know yeah what I mean? absolutely and after I was done talking she understood mm-hmm. and she was like oh I didn't know I was doing all of that to you mm-hmm. and she was like now that you're saying it she's like I remember and I see how it's bad about yeah. the time she thought she was being a good friend too you know mm-hmm. what I mean and it's like okay then that, I had that conversation doesn't mean she's back in my life. Yeah. But at least, like, I gave her that. Yeah. Because she, she kept coming back and asking. Mm-hmm. So, I'm like, fine. When I'm ready, I'll yeah. do it. And so I did. And I think it helped me, too. Because yeah. then it, it's just, like, settled with. Mm-hmm. It is, it, like, you completely close the door. Yeah. Like, why it is the way it is. Mm-hmm. And that's it. No hate. No nothing. Yeah. We'll move on. We're grown adults now. It is what it is. Yeah, you got to say your piece out of it. She got to say hers. She got to better understand... I also think too that with friendship closure, at least with my experience, like I've had friendship breakups where I've gotten closure and then it's been like rekindled to like a certain extent. Yeah. Because we had that conversation and we're like, this is why both of us kind of, because like there are the friendship breakups where like you literally just fade out and you like slowly stop talking and like you don't really have that discussion as to why and like. I had an experience like that and like we got together like had like a whole conversation about it and like we're back in each other's lives now are we as close as we used to be absolutely not are we ever gonna be like that again no because there's always that anticipation of like oh could this happen again you know what they're capable of yeah yeah but it's like 
I know that they're not a bad person. Yeah. I know that heart. they have a really good heart. They didn't mean they, anything bad. Exactly. They didn't mean anything bad. But I think rekindling friendships after friendship breakups are very individual based because certain friendships you should completely shut the door on. Yeah. Whereas other friendships, they need that evaluation sometimes that it's yeah. like, okay, people this... People grow too. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that. People go through things and like, you're definitely not the same person you were in high school. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely not. And like... Even like the same people that we were a year, a year ago, ago, two years ago, yeah. six months ago, we we're growing and evolving every yeah. single day. So I feel like, yeah, if you talk again and things mm -hmm. work out, then yeah. But some relationships, friendship, friendships. I say relationships. Because it means Because it means thing. the same thing. Like, yeah. your friendship is a relationship. Your physical, your actual partnership is a relationship. The relationship you have with your family, your coworkers, all like relationships, all relationships under the same umbrella. Yeah. And every single thing that can be said for a romantic partnership can be said for every single one of the relationships that we just listed yeah. in a different connotation, but, but still there. And there is a fine line between mm -hmm. that too. Mm -hmm. How we say that. Yeah. How do you deal with seeing like ex friends after? I'm a very awkward human, <laughs> but <Not wrong. laughs> I, tr I, tr <laughs> I try to not be rude or yeah. come off rude. Yeah. That's like my biggest thing. I'll be acquaintances with you. Yeah, I'll say hi. Yeah, I'm not going to act like you're not there because yeah. that just makes it worse. That's that's rude. <laughs> like if they act like you're not there. Fine. I'll act, okay, if you act like I'm not there, I'm going to act like you're not there yeah, because this is just too. weird now. Yeah. But, like, if I make eye contact with you, I will say hi. If yeah. you don't want to say hi to me, that's totally mm -hmm. fine. Like, I'm an adult. I can yeah. handle that. And I'll just, like, move on. Yeah. But, like, if we're both, like, saying hi, I'll say hi. Like, how are you? Good. Mm -hmm. And but that's, like, it. I Leave it short, sweet, yeah. to the point. Even if the person starts asking, like, too much about my life, I just, like, I cut it. Mm -hmm. And I will find any excuse. I think our job really helps. It does. You, you oh, I, like, know. tap out and, like... I literally had a situation with, I was talking to someone, I think I told you the story, um, but I was talking to someone, I was in the conversation, I was like, I need, like, I can't have this conversation anymore, and I literally grabbed one of the girls yeah, and, like, like switched just, places yeah. with her and was like, I don't know. So I feel like that's kind of what I do, I'll just, like, have, like, that little small talk, mm -hmm. it's just small talk. Yeah, it is, go. very surface level. Yeah, and I, I cannot have the person know anything about my life, that just freaks me out. Mm -hmm. I think it's just, like, a personal thing, yeah. I can't do it, I wouldn't want that so that's why I can't have the actual conversation yeah well also then it's like if you see them and you start getting personal it kind of like opens up that yeah. door like a crack and lets light in and I it can be confusing yeah and I also don't like when people start asking about my family no mm -hmm. don't ask no because if you're not in my life anymore at that personal ex yeah. like extent then we don't really need to have a personal conversation well because that's what people do because if they know your family and that's like the first thing they go mm -hmm. for it's like oh like how's your mom great yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, fine, thank you, yeah. let's move on. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, no, I think just always being acquaintances is just the safe bet. Hey, yeah. how are you? Good, you, awesome, nice to see you, nice to see you too. Going your separate ways. Sure. Short, sweet, to the point. Yeah. Don't, like, try to, like, overextend it. I've had friends that I've run into, or, like, old friends that I've run into, and then they've, like, texted me after, and they're like, hey, like, so great to see you, like, would love to get together. And... I'm just like, yeah, super great to see you too. And I'm kind of honest about it. And I'm like, super great to see you too. I just don't think that us getting together is a great idea. And yeah. I think like being really honest too, which is like hard. Yeah, that is hard. But it's important. Yeah. I guess it's better than not answering because that's what I would do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I like, yeah. I should do that. Just being honest. <laughs> well, it's just about easier it. because then it doesn't like in a nice way, like, but like, yeah. just be honest about it. Yeah. Like yeah. being able to be like, hey, like. I still have love for you. I still have respect for you, but like, we're no like, or the place, the relationship that we had in each other's lives has run its course. Yeah. I also do think people need to accept when you outgrow someone. Yes. Because yes. That's not like, like, if I, if you and I outgrew each other, you can come up to me and ask me about my family and mm -hmm. all that stuff. I would have no problem mm -hmm. talking to you. I would have nothing to Because that's you. so different from a but, toxic friendship. Yeah, like some people just take like different routes yes. in their lives. And you either just, grow up, you either grow together or you grow apart. Yeah, and it's that's life. totally fine. There's, And I feel like some people get mad at that. Yeah. You, you can't. It's just literally how life is. So I yeah. feel like 
there's a difference between that too. There is. And that brings me into the next question of how do you know when a friendship has naturally run its course? Hmm. I look at it when the interests aren't like similar anymore. Like if we start to like, if things start to get feel forced, yeah. like if I'm forcing an interaction with you, if things don't, because friendships like you and I, like our friendship flows. Like when I'm talking to people that I'm really close with in my life, yeah. it flows. It's easy when yeah. I feel like I have to push it for effort. Like you're pushing a boulder up a hill. I'm like, okay. Or if it's like what you're doing with your life and your life path doesn't align with me and my life path. Yeah. That, then that's, like, that's a big one too. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, you and I, like, we'll go, like, a week or two without speaking, but when yeah. we do, it's, like, yeah, like, nothing. Like, we, yeah. we talk too much, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> but that also is, like, so, like, part of adult friends that, yeah. like, we... We understand we have lives. Yeah, and, like, when you're younger, your friends are your whole life. When you're yeah. an adult, your life is your life, and your friends are, like, characters in it. Yeah. But it's they're not the main though, show. Because, like, sometimes you're, like, like, today, you're, like... My schedule got pushed back, and I was like, ugh, we're such adults. <laughs> I know. I'm I know. Like setting place and time to hang no, out. No, but that's, like, literally what it is. Adult friendships are setting specific times to hang out with yeah. people. And you're like, okay. what's your schedule like? And it's like, oh, crap, that day doesn't work for me. I was like, okay, well, this day doesn't work for me either. <laughs> so, like, like, when are we? Next month. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's literally what it is. Like, I have friends in my life where I literally, like, plan, like, a month yeah. in advance of seeing them because yeah. our schedules are just, like... We used to be like that, remember? When we first became friends. Yeah, we would see each other, like, once every six months. Yeah, and then I don't know where we're, like, with each other all the time, but... Yeah, our lives became very, like, enmeshed. It, yeah, <laughs> just became one. <laughs> they really did. We worked together. Yeah. We were dated to yeah, <laughs> whole backstory. Oh, God, very close. <laughs> um, but I feel like just, like, not forcing things is the biggest way to yeah. know. And, like, accepting it, too. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it's very hard for people to accept sometimes when you've outgrown someone. Yeah, you just have to let it go. Mm -hmm. And, like, not enough. Which is easier said than done. Oh, no, yeah, trust me. Yes, but, but that's the, just Accept. The I feel like you have to accept it. You might not be able to move on from it right away, but yeah. accepting it and knowing, or even, like, having the conversation with someone and, at, like, if you're curious as to, like, why you kind of faded, just being like, hey, like, why aren't we talking anymore? Why aren't we as close as we used to be? And, like, if you were close enough, they, they should be able to sit down and be honest with you and be like, hey, like, I just think that our lives are going in two different directions. I've had those conversations before. Yeah, and it not sucks, just, but... I outgrew this friendship. Yeah. That's not an answer. No, it's, no, it's not an answer. Can yeah. you give me, like... If we were close enough in each other's lives for me to care about the fact that you're not in my life anymore, you should be able to have enough respect for me yeah. to give me an honest answer that isn't just some bullshit, like, yeah. breezed over thing. Life yeah, give, give me, like, concrete answers. Yeah. That's fine, but can you tell me why? Yeah. yeah. That's completely fine, because it's really hard And if you don't me. want to, that's fine, but let me know that you, mm -hmm. you don't want to tell me. Yeah. But don't give me some BS yeah. statement. No, don't try to, like, sugarcoat it yeah. and not, like, directly answer it, which I think is... Something that's hard for a lot of people. Yeah. Also, we're not very sensitive people. We are So that's why we say those things, but, like... We forget that other people are very sensitive. Yeah, they wouldn't be able to just hear yeah. what the other person has to say. I mean, I've had very sensitive friends as a person who isn't very sensitive. Yeah. And I've learned to change the way that I word things yeah. so that I, like... Uh, I don't want to say like appease their feelings but I'm very aware of like what I'm saying to them and I'm approaching it in a more sensitive way yeah I feel like I if I know you I know how to talk I can to adapt you. it to yeah. you because I know your personality I know your emotions I know how to word things in a way that it isn't going to offend you but I'm still gonna be able to communicate properly yeah, what I'm trying to say too. yeah because if you if you know the person enough even though like we are very blunt people yeah. and a lot of the things that we say if we said it to other people that didn't know us could come across as very hurtful yeah. it's very we're very tactful in the way that we speak to people that we care about when we know their personalities because yeah. if I'm going into something and I know you're a highly sensitive person I'm not going to go into it guns blazing which with my bitchiest attitude on I'm going to approach it in a way that's empathetic that's compassionate that I'm able to relate to you on but we're also going to be able to get to the point yeah yeah I guess that's how I 
like with you, I know I can just come to you and be like, oh, like, what's the issue? Let's figure it out. Yeah. So, like, we don't have to, like, keep doing this. Yeah. Cause that's how, we, like, we just want to get through it. <laughs> because we're like, okay. We talk like, about it. it. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, we're sorry. We did this and this and this. Mm -hmm. And don't do that. Don't do mm -hmm. this. Because that hurt my feelings. Blah, yeah. blah. And then it's over with. Mm -hmm. And it's not other people you have to, like. We also have established yeah. a very healthy line of communication with each other, though. Yeah, true. That we can do that. That we can do that. Which I think in not everyone has in their relationships and that's something that I value so much in our friendship that if I'm upset about something even if I'm like being bitchy about it you know that it's not me attacking you no, yeah. you know that it's I'm hurt yeah. and when I'm bitchy that's my like defensiveness yeah, of hurt you are yeah. and like being able to like have that open line of communication with you and being like you know what like I'm upset right now because this happened recently that I was like I'm upset right now talk to you later <laughs> I'm gonna talk to you later because I don't want to say things that are gonna be hurtful yeah. because I value our friendship so much more yeah and being able to like take that step back and then have that communication with each other and be like, I'm upset because of X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. This is how I feel. And then whatever the yeah. communication is, I mean like, okay, awesome, great. Doesn't happen again, let's move forward. Yeah. We made it a point to establish that with each other. And to like not letting your friendships like go to waste on like stupid, stupid shit. arguments when you're upset or mm -hmm. whatever because that's also not worth it no to like let go of a friendship like literally we had a friendship for so long mm -hmm. imagine like we're just like gone to a little argument and we're like nope no that's mm -hmm. like yeah you need to prioritize things in yeah. certain ways that if the friendship is very valuable to you i try to like take a step back like if you're really upset in the moment like breathe breathe yeah and, like, even if it's, like, you don't talk for a couple days, like, and you need those couple of days, don't burn a bridge because of a stupid thing. Yeah. No, I agree. But, but a lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. and, and it's hard not to. It's hard mm -hmm. to, like, be like, oh, like, let's take a step back. But you don't want to sit there and say, like, hurtful things that you don't even mean. It's just, like, yeah. like you're just yeah. mad. Yeah. I think that goes back into, like, self-awareness, too, that being able to know how you respond to people when you are upset. If you don't have, like, good communication with that person already, that's where it just goes downhill. Because you yep. don't even know how to approach the person. Oh, no, no, no. Or, like, or you hold it in. And that's, mm -hmm. that never works. No. Because one day you'll explode. And when oh, you do, yeah, it's bad. Yep. All of the little, like, if you don't speak up at little things, the little things boil over into bigger things. Yeah. And then you hit your breaking point, and it will be, like, the dumbest thing ever. Yeah. Like, someone doesn't answer your text right away, and you're like, fuck you, you stupid bitch, <laughs> blah, blah, And you're like, this is five years of pent up <laughs> shit. And yeah. there goes the entire friendship, yeah. because... I, I learned that the hard mm -hmm. way. Just, like, letting the little things be like, no, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. No, no you, it is. No. If you are upset... Even if you think it's something that's minute and doesn't matter, you need to address it. Yeah. Because your feelings matter. You deserve to be seen. You deserve to be heard. You deserve to be validated in whatever you're feeling. Even if the person can't understand it in the moment, yeah. you're still trying to communicate it at least. Yeah. And too, like, if you felt it, you felt it. There's nothing yeah. you can do about it. Your feelings are your feelings. Yeah. No one's allowed to tell you that you don't feel that way because a, they're your feelings. It's a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. You don't know. Yep. So you might as well speak up. Yep. Because... That's all you have. No, but uh, like literally like the situation that you and I just had recently, it was a misunderstanding. No, literally. Like that's what it was. And yeah. like for myself, like I'm a very hot headed person and I let my feelings get the better of me. But like in the situation, I knew that I was like, okay, if I have a conversation with her, you just understand what happened. I'm going to be able to understand what happened. I'm pissed right now. Mm -hmm but I'm going to have that conversation and I'm going to approach it in a way where like, yeah, I'm mad and she's going to know I'm mad. <laughs> but it's better to address it then. Cause like, if I didn't say anything to you, that would have ended our entire friendship. Yeah. Cause you were just like, I would just never talk to you again. Yeah. Cause that's, yeah. Also too, learning how to say I'm sorry. Yes. When you fuck up. Yes. Oh, that's, that's a good such thing. a good one. Yeah. I yes. learned that too because before, like, I used to just be like, I would have gone mad at you for getting yep. mad at me. Mm -hmm. And I would just been like, oh, like, fuck that. And I was like, no, like, like, literally I need to talk to you because, like, if you're upset, like, can we talk it out? Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Because, like, I knew the way the situation looked that I looked so bad. So I'm like, no, like, I'm apologizing for hurting your feelings. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's so important. And, like, No, that's a really good point. don't. It's hard to admit when you're wrong. Yeah. Like, people don't understand that, like. 
a little I'm sorry goes such a long yes. way. Cause, like, it, and have it be genuine, too. Yeah. Not some oh bullshit, God, yeah, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, like, I will not say I'm sorry it. if I'm not sorry. That's like yeah. a, a well, thing for me. Because if but... you're apologizing for something, it means that you're taking ownership of what you did. Yeah. And you can't do that in a half-assed way. Yeah. Because either you're acknowledging that you were in the wrong or you're not yeah. there's no in between because like no friendship no relation there's gonna be fights there's mm-hmm. gonna be like disagreement like like your parents you're yeah. always fight with your sisters like you yeah. fight with them do you not love them you do yeah but it's we're humans that's yeah. what like we we all fight yeah. but if you learn yeah. when you're in the wrong to say i'm sorry or mm-hmm. to understand the other person or maybe you don't think you're wrong but you hurt the other person's feelings and you know you did mm-hmm. i'm sorry for hurting your feelings mm-hmm. You don't get to decide if you hurt someone or not. Yeah. You either true. you did or you didn't. Yeah. And that's for, I guess, them. That's for them to decide. Like, if someone, if you came up to me and you were like, you hurt me, it's not for me to decide and look back and be like, no, I didn't. Yeah. Because then I'm invalidating your feelings. That's not. And that's not fair. That's not a grounds for a healthy relationship at all. You talk about the situation yep. and then understand each other. Yep. Doesn't mean the feelings weren't hurt. Yep. Exactly. And I think that that's a big, big misconception that if you fight, it means that the re- there's something wrong with the relationship. Healthy relationships have disagreements. Yeah. It's maybe how the disagreement goes isn't healthy. Yeah. But healthy relationships have disagreements. Yeah, I agree. And like, there's just no way. Like, no. At one yeah. point in time, you guys are no. You're never. It's it. never picture perfect. You're yeah. always gonna like. You're two different people. Yeah. You're two very very different people. We are very long into this, so. We are going to <laughs> end it there, but is there any last takeaways that you would give for someone dealing with toxic friendships or friendship breakups? Um, maybe take a step back, not just end it all up. You know, be like, yeah. no, like, this is over. Fuck this and just throw but, in the like, towel. But, like, really think about it. Think about what you're going to do, like, your next steps, and then, like, move forward. Mm-hmm. You try to talk to the person first. It's not always worth it to just throw a friendship in the trash, yeah. but... Sometimes it's needed, Mm -hmm. and you have to really look at yourself and be like, is this what I want Mm -hmm. around me? Yep. Take a step back and evaluate it from all angles, because not all friendships are toxic, but toxic friendships can be hard to differentiate from from real ones. Yes. Listen to your mom. If your mom says... If your mom doesn't like someone... Just just know. There's a reason. Yeah. That's a big one. Yes, that is a big one. That is a big one. Well, thank you so much for being here, Nat. Oh, I'm sure this is me. not the last time that you will appear. Um, and thank you guys so, so much for listening. I hope that you got something out of this. And our little stories. <laughs> and our little stories. So we will talk soon. Bye. Bye.